Charles Perrault was a French author and member of the Accade Copyright My Fonnes section S. He laid the foundations for a new literary genre, the fairy tale, with his works derived from pre-existing folk tales. The best known of his tales include La Petite Chaperon Rouge, Cendrillon, Le Chatbot à Copyright, La Belle aux Boys Dormant and La Barbe Blair. Many of Perrault's stories, which were rewritten by the Brothers Grimm, continue to be printed and have been adapted to opera, ballet, theatre, and film. Perrault was an influential figure in the 17th century French literary scene, and was the leader of the modern faction during the quarrel of the ancients and the moderns. Biography Charles Perrault was born in Paris to a wealthy bourgeois family, the seventh child of Pierre Perrault and Parquet Leclerc. He attended good schools and studied law before embarking on a career in government service, following in the footsteps of his father and older brother Jean. He took part in the creation of the Academy of Sciences as well as the restoration of the Academy of Painting. In 1654, he moved in with his brother Pierre, who had purchased a post as the principal tax collector of the city of Paris. When the Academy of Inscriptions and Belles Lettres was founded in 1663, Perrault was appointed its secretary and served under Jean-Baptiste Colbert, finance minister to King Louis XIV. Jean Chapelain, Amable de Bozies, and Jacques Cassan were also appointed. Using his influence as Colbert's administrative aide, he was able to get his brother, Claude Perrault, employed as designer of the new section of the Louvre, built between 1665 and 1680, to be overseen by Colbert. His design was chosen over designs by Gian Lorenzo Benini and for an a section War Mansart. One of the factors leading to this choice included the fear of high costs, for which other architects were infamous, and second was the personal antagonism between Bernini and leading members of Louis's court, including Colbert and Perrault. King Louis himself maintained a public air of benevolence towards Bernini, ordering the issuing of a royal bronze portrait medal in honor of the artist in 1674. In 1668, Perrault wrote La Pincha to honor the king's first painter, Charles Le Brun. He also wrote Courses de Testis et de Bagu, written to commemorate the 1662 celebrations staged by Louis for his mistress, Louise Frenet Sectionnoise de la Baume Le Blanc, Duchesse de la Valerie. Perrault married Marie Guichon, aged 19, in 1672. She died in 1678. In 1669 Perrault advised Louis XIV to include 39 fountains each representing one of the fables of Aesop in the Labyrinth of Versailles and the Gardens of Versailles. The work was carried out between 1672 and 1677. Water jets spurting from the animals' mouths were conceived to give the impression of speech between the creatures. There was a plaque with a caption and a quatrain written by the poet Isaac de Benserade next to each fountain. Perrault produced the guidebook for the Labyrinth, Labyrinth de Versailles, printed at the Royal Press, Paris, in 1677, and illustrated by Sébastien Leclerc. Philippe Quinault, a longtime family friend of the Perrault's, quickly gained a reputation as the librettist for the new musical genre known as opera, collaborating with composer Jean-Baptiste Lully. After Ailcest was denounced by traditionalists who rejected it for deviating from classical theatre, Perrault wrote in response Critique de l'Opa Copyright Ra in which he praised the merits of Ailcest over the tragedy of the same name by Euripides. His treatise was one of the first documents of the literary debate that was later to become known as the Quarrel of the Ancients and the Moderns. Perrault was elected to the Accade Copyright My Fonnes Sectionnaires in 1671 and initiated the Quarrel of the Ancients and the Moderns, which pitted supporters of the literature of antiquity against supporters of the literature from the century of Louis XIV. He was on the side of the moderns and wrote Le Siacle de Louis Le Grand and Parallèle des Anciens et des Moderns, where he attempted to prove the superiority of the literature of his century. Le Siacle de Louis Le Grand was written in celebration of Louis XIV's recovery from a life threatening operation. Perrault argued that because of Louis's enlightened rule, the present age was superior in every respect to ancient times. He also claimed that even modern French literature was superior to the works of antiquity, and that, after all, even Homer nods. In 1682, Colbert gave his son, Jules Armand, Marquis d'Ormoy, 
the same tasks as Perot and forced him into retirement at the age of 56. Colbert would die the next year, and he stopped receiving the pension given to him as a writer. Colbert's successor, Frenna Section War Michel Letelier, Marquis de Louvois, who was jealous of Colbert, quickly removed Perot from his other appointments. After this, in 1686, Perot decided to write epic poetry and show his genuine devotion to Christianity, writing Saint Paulin, a copyright Varquet de Nala. Just like Jean Chapelain's La Pucelle, You La France da Copyright Livre Copyright E, an epic poem about Joan of Arc, Perot became a target of mockery from Nicolas Boileau de Spre Copyright O. Charles Perrault died in Paris in 1703 at age 75. Tales of Mother Goose, in 1695, when he was 67, Perrault lost his post as secretary. He decided to dedicate himself to his children. In 1697 he published Tales and Stories of the Past with Morals, subtitled Tales of Mother Goose. Its publication made him suddenly widely known beyond his own circles. He is often credited as the founder of the modern fairy tale genre, yet his work reflects awareness of earlier fairy tales written in the salons, most notably by Marie Catherine Le Jumel de Barneville, Baroness Dormoy, who coined the phrase fairy tale, and was writing tales as early as 1690. Even so, many of the most well known tales that we hear today, such as Cinderella and Little Red Riding Hood, are told as he wrote them. He had actually published his collection under the name of his last son, Pierre d'Armenort, probably fearful of criticism from the ancients. In the tales, he used images from around him, such as the Chateau Ossa copyright for the Sleeping Beauty and in Puss in Boots the Marquis of the Car Saint Odoran, and contrasted his folktale subject matter, with details and asides and subtext drawn from the world of fashion. Following up on these tales, he translated the fabuli centum of the Latin poet Gabriel Fernot into French verse in 1699. See also Marie-Jeanne Le Copyright Rittier, Charles Perrault's niece, Madame Dornoy, the brothers Grimm retold their own versions of some of Perrault's fairy tales, Hans Christian Andersen, who continued the fairy tale genre in the 19th century, references. Further reading, Zarocchi, Jan Morgan, 17th century French writers, Detroit, Gale, ISBN A978-0-7876-60126-1. Perrault, Charles, Les Humes Illustres qui ont Perrault en France pendant ses cirques, avec leur portraits ou en ATURIL 1, Parisa, Perrault, Charles, Les Humes Illustres qui ont Perrault en France pendant ses cirques, avec leur portraits ou en ATURIL 2, Parisa, Ozil, John, Characters Historical Panegyrical of the Greatest Men that Have Appeared in France During the Last Century 1704-05 A Volume 1, Vol. 2. External links, media related to Charles Perrault at Wikimedia Commons, a Charles Perrault. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton Company 1913 A, Works by Charles Perrault at Project Gutenberg. Works by or about Charles Perrault at Internet Archive, works by Charles Perrault at LibriVox, Charles Perrault at the Internet Speculative Fiction Database, Charles Perrault's Fairy Tales at World of Tales, Sur la Lune Fairy Tale Pages, Fairy Tales of Charles Perrault, French, Charles Perrault, his work in audio version, Fairy Tales of Charles Perrault, The Tales of Mother Goose, Illustrated Fairy Tales of Charles Perrault.